of 3D printing news on field, thanks to 3dprint.com. So previously, we talked a few times, and there's been some articles way back from us at 3dprint.com since about 2015 or so, talking about passive cooling or evaporative cooling using 3D printed ceramics. And a lot of people have been kind of experimenting with this. Some designers have been doing some stuff in this, but uh, I really think it's a, it's a very, very um, a ripe for exploitation area because we're talking about we can make 3D printed objects with a lot of surface area, with the optimal optimized surface area that look pretty and then also have a kind of a cooling function. So think about something to cool a water bottle or something to even cool a house or cool a room or cool a part of the house or, 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 or to cool um, you know, particular tiles or, or floors and that kind of thing. So I think these evaporative cooling solutions which have been used throughout history uh, to uh, maintain ice in, in the desert and to, um, and to cool homes and to keep food uh, warm uh, they could very well have a new lease on life uh, using 3D printing. And uh, one of the people uh, working on exactly this uh, uh, have come up with uh, something uh, that have come up with something recently is Simon Pavi and Entreacher, which is a design studio, uh, working with Olivier van Herp. So Olivier van Herp has been working for about 12 years or so on a breakthrough ceramics 3D printing technology that can make large scale ceramic items. So think like a giant base, like a meter and a half and uh, 30 centimeters of diameter and printed in like an hour, hour and a half, that kind of thing. And also being able, what he is able to do is do very, very thin wall thickness of only a few millimeters and very, very highly detailed, highly accurate uh, 3D printed parts and make them out of porcelain, terracotta and other ceramics and do that in a reliable, repeatable fashion. So it's quite unique. And he's now worked with these designers uh, to uh, make a, a, a terracotta container. This is filled with water and through evaporative cooling using this water evaporative ev evaporator effect apparently what they call it we uh but you know more commonly referred to as evaporative cooling that water will through this porous terracotta substance <clears throat> cool the area around it um now of course the the maximization of airflow and this kind of nature inspired kind of a very uh very uh high surface area uh sub uh, uh design you can see in front of you um, yeah, it, it's something ideal. And I, I'd love to see many, many things, many more things like this. Imagine jewelry that can cool you uh, or, or cool someone around you. Uh, or imagine things that uh, just a beautiful artwork that sits in your home that can also keep it a little bit cooler. <clears throat> I think these kind of things, uh, in light of uh, recent temperature rises and things like that, uh, will become uh, more interesting. Because, because, you know, on the one thing is, like, Imagine if it gets hotter and then everyone starts buying air conditioners, we're just going to make this problem a lot worse um, and a lot worse much faster. So uh, this could be a, a temporary respite or a, a partial solution to that problem. And uh, that could be a very, very big problem. So it's a really wonderful uh, role for 3D printing to play if we could do it. Uh, the next thing is uh, the rather surprising and very good news that Torborn Lundvigsen, uh, who's the inventor of the hang printer, uh, had uh, has been successful in launching a legal challenge uh, to Oak Ridge National Laboratories. Um, so the reason why I think this is good news is because, well, generally the patent game is a game for really, really big companies battling it out. You know, Google, IBM, Microsoft, uh, these really gigantic companies amassing lots of patents, uh, holding on to them and exploiting them for good or for worse. And for the little guy, yeah. You, you, even if you're in the right or something like that, you could you just probably don't have the money right now to challenge a patent or to play in the patent game or to sue for patent infringement. So it's really rare that the, the, the little guy, if you will, uh, you know, gets any kind of um, kind of a satisfactory solution in this, in this the, the increasingly weaponized patent system. But Torbjorn, whom I'm probably mispronouncing the name, but it is known for the hang printer. So what's the hang printer? You can see it in front of you, and if you can see it, it's, and you haven't heard of this yet, uh, it's probably very, very clear. Uh, the hang printer is essentially a printer suspended by cables. And uh, this is notable and uh, um, very, very important because it's one of the few ways you can 3D print uh, an infinite space. So think about it. If you want to print infinitely, an infinite volume, what you can do, no, you can either make a really large gantry, right, or in a really large mobile gantry, right, or printer this mobile in a gantry in some way. You can make uh, kind of a conveyor belt or multiple conveyor belts that move in multiple directions. You could put the 3D printer on a vehicle, like a, a land-based vehicle or like a drone. Or you could do something like, or you could, you know, kind of essentially like build it into a building as well, or you could just suspend it in cables like this. So, so there aren't that many ways, if you don't new ones, uh, please put them in the comments. Uh, um, there aren't that many ways of having like an infinite build volume 3D printer really. 
uh, in all directions and, 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 and to make many, many things. And Torborn, with its hang printer, uh, had found out uh, and uh, demonstrated how to do one uh, back in 2014. Now, Oak Ridge then patented its SkyBAM Sky Bam technology, which was remarkably similar. Um, now, what then happened with that granted patent in 2018, usually you wouldn't be able to do something, but Torborn was able to, to do a crowdfunding and based on the back of that crowdfunding, try to start to kind of defend his uh, um, uh, his uh, open source project, the Hang Printer, and the kind of principle of this open source kind of Delta type uh, uh, 3D printer, is able to defend this. Now, right now, the the U.S. Patent Law and Trademark Office have uh, rejected the patents, the Oak Ridge's original claims, and uh, have kind of considerably narrowed them down. Uh, so this is quite good for the industry as a whole. That means that lots and lots of people can exploit this technology now, and, and, and it's much more open. And it also means that Hang Printer itself can, and is a really viable future as an open source project. Now, we have to be cognizant of these things. Like, you could be super anti-open source or closed, uh, or, or, or you know, not really have an opinion on it. But the thing is, like in 3D printing, there's only so many ways to butter a sandwich. There's only so many ways we could spread a material in some way, or spread a powder and then harden it, or melt something and then uh, um, uh, and then and then harden it. There's only so many ways. So we are going to increasingly in the future start having patents not only the same technology but similar technologies kind of bump, bump into each other. We already see this in kind of uh, the light-based technologies where these VAT polymerization technologies are increasing, even though they may have very different mechanisms, uh, are kind of colliding with each other. It's very unclear who has certain patents for certain uh, things you can do. So this is, you know, in a more crowded technology landscape, this is going to be even more of a problem. So we should really follow these kind of things. And here, I'm, I'm kind of automatically cheering for the little guy here, although I think Oak Ridge, of course, is doing some amazing stuff, and I've really, really done a ton for the technology. Um, so it's nothing, I don't have absolutely nothing against Oak Ridge, uh, uh, far from it. But but at the same time, I think it's interesting that an open source project, and by no means a huge one, right, is able to, to through crowdfunding, mount a successful defense, uh, at least in, in looking at and uh, getting the, the patent office to look at this patent that's previously granted to a U.S. government entity and then severely narrowing it down. I think that's 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 a, that's a great news for all the, the small-time inventors, like the one person with one desk, she's behind it, and their laptop inventing a new thing. This is great news for them. So this is wonderful. Um, the next thing is a news from the UK. Now, the UK has long been quite of a laggard in 3D printing land, really, uh, in especially in the adoption for, for defense and other things like this. But we've seen a, a real uptake in investments in 3D printing technologies for defense, real uh, UK-wide defense projects led by Innovate UK and other funding sources. And this is another one. Uh, this is... a. Uh, uh, the large format additive manufacturing project, LFAM. So this is working with Evo 3D, the National Manufacturing Institute of Scotland, uh, which is at the University of Strathclyde. Uh, the, this HMV, this high value manufacturing catapult, these catapults, these kind of like innovation centers across the UK. Rolls-Royce, right? Filamentive, which I think is an interesting choice. Uh, AI Build, which makes software for large scale 3D printers, a UK based startup. Uh, and Baker Hughes, which is an oil, oil field uh, services company. Now, they're all going to work together and take 1.1 million uh, pounds from Innovate UK to make an accurate large volume production system. So they're trying to make a nozzle-based um, material extrusion type uh, system that is significantly re more reliable, productive, uh, uh, and, and more repeatable than existing uh, systems. Now, what they then hope to do, and this is kind of interesting, they, they already now are saying, look, we're all going to work on this together. But then later on, this is going to be spun out, if you will, into a thing called rapid fusion. So we're not going to kind of leave it in the middle of what we're going to do with the technology. We're not going to give it to everyone involved in the project. We're essentially going to create a new startup together called rapid fusion. I think this is really interesting because a lot of this EU-funded work is basically we're going to do the research and then ta -da, it stops, right? Uh, which is wonderful for, for a lot of stuff, but especially stuff that's so close to the market, especially stuff that's so kind of like high technology readiness and stuff like this. Well, maybe it makes sense to put a startup uh, 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 as the, the end point of this journey. So, so I thought this is something that made me think. I and mean, you know, it could also be super limiting, right? Um, all the partners, project partners could kind of use up the money, but not really think that it's going to be their IP or not really think it's going to be their expertise. So maybe not work as hard as they would do if, if they were just doing this in a pure research context. But I thought this is, a, this is something to think about at least and, uh, as a, a thing. And, um, you know, the idea that the UK is now taking its own money and then 
making a, a, a large scale manufacturing uh, uh, material extrusion manufacturing company is, is, is also very, very interesting. Um, the reason why this is important is because for drones, for the automated production of boats, um, for any large scale polymer kind of structures, uh, for foreign work and all this stuff, these large scale systems are, um, you know, increasingly very, very important. And it could be a very strategic uh, um, importance as we are seeing in, in, in wars worldwide at the moment. So uh, this is an important move. I think a wise move of the UK. If they can get this done for a million pounds, it's a it's a great investment. Uh, uh, I think for them to have some uh, company like this to 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 work with their defense establishment uh, on these kind of things. So I think it looks like a great investment if they can make this work for for a million pounds. Anyway, so uh, my name is Joris Peels. This was three D printing news unpeeled, and I hope you enjoyed uh, and found this useful. Have a great day.